I just started the registration of the lesson. So good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Gianluca Antonelli, and uh, I'm going to teach the class of uh, Introduction to Robotic Systems. For This is an elective class uh, for uh, uh, Mechanical Engineering and uh, Sistemi Robotici for L'Area Magistrale in Ingegneria Informatica. Uh, good morning to everybody. Most of you uh, were students of the first year because we moved from uh, uh, teaching this class to the, from the first year to the second year. So last year we didn't have uh, uh, robotics, the class of robotics. We will start today uh, with some uh, useful information and uh, really a very easy talk about robotics. Okay, just to have an idea uh, what robotics is and what we are going to, to see in these three months. We will have uh, approximately uh, 72 hours of uh, teaching and uh, uh, two lessons uh, will be theory, let me say here in this class, and uh, two remotely. I will uh, try to have uh, in remotely the um, uh, exercise, the, the, the uh, programming part. Uh, up to last year, my habit was to, during the, 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 the practice class, my habit was to uh, let you code, stay in the, in the class, and just help on a specific case or after, let me say, one hour work. Okay, and we spent three, even more hours in the class because time passes when we, we program. Now, uh, um, remotely, I think this will not be possible. So I think I'm going to change. And my idea, but let let be adaptive and and uh, see what happens. My idea is that I first do the exercise in MATLAB remotely, sharing my screen. Then you repeat it by yourself, and it doesn't have any sense that we are connected. And then we will meet again to see what uh, you have done. Okay, so that I have a feedback of, of your exercises. Uh, for the mechanical engineering, this class is uh, uh, six um, ECTS for you, so six credits. For uh, the Magistrale in Ingegneria Informatica, this is nine. It means that uh, uh, we, you will stop earlier the teaching and I will tell you when. Okay. Classroom codes and meet link, you are here, so you find somehow. This is the this is the um, the schedule. Mm, I'm not sure but maybe I will ask uh, to uh, to move the classes to the room. I will tell you of course. And then we start timely. So better five minutes in advance and not five minutes late, okay? This is for you because I remember you in uh, last year. Uh, no need to use your phone, no need to chat, but this is something that I don't have to tell anymore. But two years ago, I mean, this is something that I had to, to repeat continuously. I usually had a reception, of course, uh, in my room by appointment, uh, but this year we are not allowed to meet the students in the offices, uh, so just send me a mail and we will have an appointment on it. Okay. The exam, for the students that made, uh, sorry, for the students that made uh, uh, last year, Teoria dei Sistemi, uh, the idea is uh, pretty much the same. So you we will have a project, and uh, this project uh, uh, concerns a, a numerical simulation with MATLAB and connected to another software that I will show you. Let me say that uh, the difficulty is uh, no more than the difficulty of last year from the point of view of uh, programming. Because we will use uh, an additional software, the name is Coppelia Sim, we will see it later, 
only as a graphical visualization of the animation of the robot. Okay, so nothing. Uh, the complexity is not uh, uh, incremented with respect to last year. And then during the project or in the end of the project, uh, I will make you question on the theoretical aspect. So now I would like to ask to the students of mechanical engineering, uh, what kind of programming experience you had in your uh, career? Uh, please just, you know, one by one, if you have just, can give me just one sentence telling me if you already did some kind of programming and in what language or if you don't have any experience in uh, programming computer science. I, I, can, I can call the name so uh, to avoid the talk. Najendra Babu Bola. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Professor. Yes. Can I have you... some basic knowledge about this math lab. Okay. Where did you get your uh, knowledge? In what class? Or, or class your class? Uh, in class. Sorry? Uh, in first year, Professor, uh, with the hybrid oh. subject. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sumar Kumar Red Madula. Okay, few basics. Can you just write where? Professor, okay. <laughs> okay can you just uh, tell me where you got your basics knowledge by yourself or in another class okay we are not going to use a simulink but a, a matlab in this class. Uh, okay, Pavan uh, Kumar Reddy Palukuru, thanks. I can read it, uh, MATLAB, a few basics. Uh, what about you, uh, Tianyu Wang? Uh, I, I don't know about the MATLAB, Professor. Any other experience with uh, any other language? Uh, no, Professor. Okay. Uh, okay, we will uh, we'll have this discussion next Tuesday when we'll all... Or I don't know if the first, uh, uh, first Tuesday is already practiced, but we will see. Uh, but, I mean, mm, this is something that already um, happened uh, two years ago. The students from mechanical engineering uh, had some difficulties uh, in... Uh, programming so let's discuss about that and try to to you, know, you, you should make some more exercise on programming in order to make the the the, the practical part okay okay thank you uh, i would like uh, this year to to try we bought a small uh, educational robot uh, a desk robot and i would like to try to to use it for uh, for the the project uh, i'm i'm currently I asked the guy to connect it to, to MATLAB and in, in order to use the same code to use to Mat uh, in MATLAB to control it. We'll, uh, I think we will be ready for when needed. Uh, you are at the second year, so I think you are already thinking at... I'm sorry, ah, okay, at, at the thesis. Uh, may I ask you if you see the mouse from uh, remotely on Meet? Can you see the pointer of the mouse? Yes. Okay, because sometimes we had trouble. So I can't 
point to specific part of the slide and you can see for example now i'm uh, close to the word thesis right can you see it mm -hmm. okay thank you so we do offer a wide range of uh, thesis and uh, i mean just uh, talk to us and uh, have a look uh, at the website and the thesis can can range from a lot of coding without theory a lot of math without coding if you want to make experiments uh, we need the students to to make a lot of stuff so we are happy if you want to make uh, the thesis uh, just have a look at the website of uh, uh, the lab and just have a look uh, at the uh, YouTube channel with the videos of the experiments. We are currently involved uh, in several projects. So this is the list of research projects uh, we have done in the last uh, uh, 10 years, uh, even, even more than 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago, we started the first European project and then we continued with a lot of uh, European and national projects. Here you can see those are all uh, ended, all finished. Just feel free to have a look at the website if you want to see what we are doing. This is one uh, is running, but it's going to finish uh, uh, next uh, January. And uh, it's a European project uh, on uh, marine robotics infrastructure. So the idea with this project uh, is to have um, a network of inf infrastructures that offer to uh, third uh, researchers, uh, researchers from third parties to use their hardware to make experiments. And uh, we are in, here uh, uh, within a, an Italian consortium of universities working in marine robotics. And then uh, we have another project. This is uh, driven by Professor Arichello that is funded by uh, Carnegie Mellon at Qatar. So uh, the American university that has a, um, a uh, site in Qatar is about multi-robot uh, aerial and marine that uh, work in collaboration to do some uh, tasks, for example, monitoring. This is a national one where the idea is to have uh, distributed sensing fixed and mobile and a mobile sensor is a robot to monitor it um, to monitor the environment this is uh, a national one where we need to make uh, underground sampling and so we are developing an underground robot another one is not listed here is with the italian uh, defense and it, it is related, all, all, I mean, all, of course, to robotics, but marine robotics. Okay, so a network of mobile underwater uh, robots that uses uh, acoustic sensors to detect possible threats. This is more or less what we do, and uh, the, the lab, we will go to the, into the lab. We'll, uh, I organize every year a meeting to the lab, so you will have the possibility to see it. I think that most of you already saw those robots and uh, those robots are kind, quite, I mean, good piece of hardware, each with 20 degrees of freedom, two robots of six degrees of freedom each, pan tilt RGBD and a mobile base. But we will have the possibility to talk and to see all this stuff during the fall during the autumn okay uh, i'm going to use the slides uh, you can already find uh, the pdf uh, on classroom and uh, what usually the students uh, do is that they download in advance the slides and 95 percent there is the same i i change it incrementally and in, uh, at the beginning of the, of the um, semester, I just upload, let me say, the same version as the year, um, the previous year. Just compile with the, with the academic year, but it's the same. 
And then uh, I slightly change something, but 95% is the same. And then most of the students, they, they benefit from taking notes on the slides printed or on a tablet or on a mobile, whatever you want. And I have to acknowledge the fact that uh, those slides are, have been uh, possible in the first edition, at least with the material. The master thesis in uh, 94-95. Uh, this is compiled, uh, the, 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 the language is LaTeX, uh, Actually, it was in tech, the, the original one. So it really saved me a few weeks of work because all the equations are there. Uh, the images, uh, I, I added a lot of images uh, and equations uh, during the years, but uh, most of the images are taken from the textbook of uh, Bruno. This is uh, one of the, I don't know if this is the last one, and this is one of the most diffused books on ro textbooks uh, on robotics uh, uh, worldwide. Okay, so most of universities use this book, is, and we will uh, mostly use the approach, the equations, and I change it some some aspect in some part, but mostly is uh, related to this one. Okay, those are the topics we are going to study. And uh, the importance of the topic is not, let me say, equal. This is not an homogeneous distribution of uh, the, the, the difficulty and also the length of the slides. You will see it. For the students of uh, uh, mechanical, mechanical engineering, we will probably stop here at actuators and sensors. Okay, but I mean, I will, I will uh, give you the exact class when finished uh, later on. Uh, we are not going to, to, to have the class on quadrotor control. So we will stop in the end of interaction control. And those are the uh, exercises that we are going to do. And for the mechanical engineering students, you will definitely stop here, differential kinematics inversion. Okay, so let us start. And as, as I told you, today is really an easy discussion. Feel free to interrupt me whenever you want. Feel free uh, to interrupt uh, whenever you want. Uh, Okay, if you write something on the on the on the chat, I should hear, you know, a notification. In case not, just open your microphone and uh, and interrupt me without problem. And the same is uh, for you. I already told you uh, last year. I do need that you interact with me in order to understand how the lesson is going, no matter if we are recording or not the lesson. OK, so just few information about what's going on in robotics in the last 20 years. Let, let us start in uh, 2002. In 2002, an employee from Sony Corporation presented in a kind of workshop, this plot. If you look at it, we have uh, time on the x-axis and some kind uh, of uh, waves on the y-axis. When he made this uh, presentation, it was 2002, so we were here, more or less. The first wave, the yellow one, is what they define the analog wave with television and video recorder, analog video recorder. Actually, it, I mean, it could be that you have never seen a VHS, for example. That was the way to record a analog, an analogic transmission from TV. Then we witnessed, we witnessed it, the first 
digital way. The, I mean, they define the first digital way with the uh, PC. Okay. Let me say that when I was student, more or less here, it was uncommon to have uh, a PC at home. Not all the students had it. It was quite expensive. Then the second digital wave with the so digital consumer network starting more or less end of 19th. And then he said, okay, we are at the beginning of the robotics wave. This was his forecast in 2000. Now we are in 2020. According to his forecast, we should be over the maturity and almost uh, in, the, in the flat area. Okay? Not sure we are here. In 2006, Bill Gates published an article on a Scientific American saying we are going to sell a robot in every home. And they started to make uh, a very aggressive uh, campaign of uh, um, kind of software for, uh, for robotics, for Microsoft, of course, in a similar way that uh, they've done with the uh, operating system or, or with, with the office packet in the beginning. So they gave it for free at the universities. They gave it very cheap in order to try to have uh, all the people, uh, let me say, used to it, and then try to sell it. With the robots, it just failed. Okay. In conferences, uh, I, more or less at that time, I used to see some, some researchers from uh, American University that used this uh, uh, Microsoft robotic toolbox to make experiments. After 20 years, none was in use, at, at my best of my knowledge. Now, some other, just I, I, I collected some uh, information about uh, in 2013, we have uh, a uh, first page of time that says manufacturing is back, but where are the jobs? And here we have some robots in the first page. So embedded he is that maybe the robots are making the job because the manufacturing is increasing, but not the person. 2014, this is BBC UK, the robots are coming to steal our job. And this is another forecast, it's already six years ago. This is a joke, I don't know if you know it, uh, it, it is Italian, so I'm sorry. And actually, this is in ancient, uh, ancient Italian, sorry for, for the foreign students, uh, against the technology, okay, it's just a way it's much similar to this one, okay, but in a, in a funny way, let me say, it should make things. Again, 2014, The Economist, Rise of the Robots. This is an art article all dedicated to the robots. And let us have a look uh, of uh, the draw that the journalist made. We have uh, an aerial robot bringing items. 2014, maybe you remember a commercial by Amazon about uh, uh, delivery items with aerial robots. Uh, I haven't seen any. Companion robot. This robot is feeding an old uh, woman and another one that is taking care of a child. 2014, this is, I'm sorry, this is in Italian, I'm going to translate, but here we have uh, a title in English. Uh, Google bought 21 companies in uh, 2014, and eight of those companies were related to robotics. The other were more or less dedicated to inter uh, artificial intelligence. Eight were totally devoted to robotics. And there were a lot of rumors what Google is going to do in 2014 with 21 acquisitions. Then the same year, we have uh, a statistics, statistics from 
Robotic Industry Association that is in the United States that says, well, we have a record uh, in the robotics market of uh, sold robots, industrial robots. 15, an article uh, from Wired, the, the UK one, but we also have the, the Italian uh, version, with some uh, uh, studies about the fact that uh, technology created more jobs than it has destroyed. And this is something, I mean, we should think as engineers and uh, robotics is stealing or not the jobs, but robotics is just one of uh, one technological application. So is technology stealing the job or not? And uh, personally, I think that is changing the jobs. We need, uh, no, we need. Statistics says that uh, we are employing person with a degree rather than labor force without any uh, educational title. Okay, so the jobs are moving, they're not still. This is in Italian, sorry, is a, a title from uh, a, a, an Italian uh, newspaper, 2016, another forecast. We have plenty of course forecasts on robotics. In 2016, we discovered that Google sold the robotics company that they bought two, two, three years earlier. Okay, it wasn't as easy as they expected when they bought the robots, because if you believe at the commercial and some videos on robotics, they're kind of commercials, everything has been done. This is not true. 2018, uh, there is uh, an increase of uh, robot programmers uh, in uh, the labor market. 2020, so just now, July, self-driving self industry takes to the highway after robot, tax, robot taxi failure. So it's hard to make robots. Some statistics, I let me skip this one. Uh, the blue one is the unemployment. The red one is the number of robots. And uh, if you took a class of uh, any uh, statistics, if you see any correlation, congratulations. I don't see any correlation in those two plots made in different countries in the world. Sometimes it seems a positive correlation, sometimes it's negative or no correlation at all. Uh, annual supply of industrial robots in the world increasing linearly, except when uh, economical crisis arose in uh, 29. Here we can see where in what kind of industry the robots are mostly used. Okay, so for three years, 20, 2012, 2013, and 2014. The automotive industry is by far the industry where the robots are needed. Electrical, electronics as well, metal, chemical, rubber, and plastics, food. I don't know if uh, you can read also the letter, maybe yes, others unspecified. Here the number, the x-axis is the number of units uh, and here we have uh, 100. Okay, those numbers, let me say, okay, we'll skip. I have a, I should have another one with the unspecified. Okay. Uh, annual supply of industrial robots, Asia, Australia, Europe, and America. Okay, this is the annual supply. This has been done in 2015, so for the year 15, 16, 17, 18 is a forecast, but it has been more or less, uh, the prediction more or less was good. And you can appreciate that, uh, I mean, what is the relative weight of robotics in the world among the continents? Where do the robots are used, the, the so-called service robots, so not the industrial one? First of all, the fence. Unfortunately, as usual, defense is putting a lot of money in research and 
for 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 uh, any kind of research, not only robotics, of course, but robotics and uh, automatic control. Uh, a lot of uh, theoretical advances have been done because of the funding by the defense. Uh, field robotics, logistic, mobile platform. Here the scale is different, so this was the plot with a different scale. In this case, we have the unit is 10,000, but here this is 1,000, so it's going to decrease in the just zoom. Medical robotics, construction, cleaning, inspection, underwater, rescue and security, and others. Here, this is a very uh, stupid way to make plots. I'll, I'll tell you why. Those are the, the, the plots sold for personal domestic use. In the gray is 2011, red is 2012, and then they collected three years uh, in the blue uh, in the blue column. So it's quite difficult to appreciate. Okay? So it's, uh, non, uh, it's not very clear. Again, sales increasing except for 29, where a economical crisis, uh, we, ex we experience an economical crisis. Okay, this is a, a, a nice plot. I, I know that it's not easy to read it from there, but of course you will have the slides and, and the, the video. So I'll tell you what is in the x-axis. Here it is written benefit. In the y-axis, negative consequences. And they just, this guy, they just made uh, a survey. And they say, okay, I'll tell you the name of a technology and tell me where should I put it in this plot. Okay. For example, geoengineering. This, this blue plot here is geoengineering. And the survey says very small benefit with respect to possible, potential, uh, strong negative consequences. Uh, this one is energy capture, storage and transmission. Everyone that has been interviewed think, okay, I mean, the, the benefit, the potential benefit are huge, but the negative uh, uh, consequence, uh, I don't see any. This is what the survey says. And where is robotics, together with artificial intelligence, is here. So, according to this survey, this is one of the topics that owns the largest potential benefit together with the la largest potential negative consequence. Okay, this is a, a mood to take into account. Now, automatic control. I'll a few years ago, five years ago, we made um, a consulting for uh, a company and they needed to make this guy automatic. Okay? Not this specific model, but uh, while we were looking for a possible solution, we asked it for some um, prices and this guy here, if you buy only the hardware, the cost is, let me say, one, okay? If you buy the hardware plus the ground control station, the communication data link, and the automatic fly, the price is 10 times the price of the hardware itself. So when you think where, you know, automatic control he is and why it is important, this is the way they increase the, the price of this item by putting... Of course, it's difficult to separate those three aspects because they just gave me the price altogether. So maybe everything is the communication data link. But uh, I pretend that it's not. I pretend that it's the automatic flight in the ground control station. Okay. Let us continue where, with a very easy introduction. Okay, what is a robot? We will uh, study, uh, basically, 
applied mathematics because we will uh, see a lot of equations in this in this class uh, a lot of uh, code and we will try to understand how it is possible uh, to control a robot how is it possible to understand what the robot is doing or where it, where is it but first of all what is a robot we will study mostly something like this one and this is an historical picture because this is the first uh, uh, anthropomorphic robot, more or less seems uh, an industrial robot that is, was made at the Stanford University uh, some 50, 60 years ago. Okay? It's very popular in the community because it's the first one. However, the kind of stuff that we are going to study are more or less, more or less it's... Uh, is intentionally vague, similar to mobile robotics, uh, driverless cars, even this is a toy, but uh, more or less the logic is the same. Humanoids, this is another humanoid, actually this is a mobile robot, it's, it's a fake one, or even very strange robots as this one, where the actuators are very let me say, strange kind of a word, but the concepts will be shared by all these objects, even if we will keep our uh, attention on this kind of robot. Okay, the word robot is one of the few foreign words that we use in Italian, not coming from English, but it comes from a Czech word. Okay, that mean EV work. Uh, this has been used for the first time uh, in uh, a uh, comedy, and this is the, the uh, commercial of this comedy. Uh, it was something like uh, 1920, something like that. And of course, the robot were a slave, and then they made a revolution and uh, fate against the man. This is an history that. Uh, is always there when we talk about science fiction and robotics. Uh, the definition of robot is not universal. And for example, uh, if you look at the Wikipedia, the definition changed several times. Okay. What is the expectation of robotics? Where, what was the expectation of robotics so when technology was just arising? Those are uh, postcards from an artist, a French one, in 1899, a very few years after electricity was popular. Here we have a robot that is cleaning. This is an agricultural robot. Those are carrying heavy items. This one is, is making uh, is a barber shop. And then this, this is very I mean, this is very visionary from, from the artist because this guy is controlling remotely a constructive robot. Okay, and I mean, congratulations to him to, to have had this idea. Okay, for, for us, what is robotics? We'll call it robotics as the connection between perception and action. Intelligent connection, yes. Uh, this is the definition of a controller. If uh, we remember the control loop, we have sensor, control, and actuator. For us, a robot is more or less the same, okay? But it moves. This is the, 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 this is the aspect that makes the difference between a robot and artificial intelligence. We do use artificial intelligence in our stuff, but we do not consider artificial intelligence as robotics. If you don't have anything that moves, this is my personal view, my personal definition. Okay? We have already seen this one. Okay. What do I need to, to study robotics? Or what kind, of, from another perspective, what kind of researcher do I meet in a robotics conference? What, what, the, what background do they have? This is quite important. First of all, we do need to have some basics in physics and mathematics. 
we need to understand and uh, to understand uh, how a robot moves is the second law of dynamics is force equal mass by acceleration okay this will be the point of departure to understand uh, how a robot moves because those are serially connected rigidly rigid bodies okay yes we do need uh, a little bit of mathematics and uh, incredibly linear algebra the same as state space dynamic systems teoria di sistemi in italian that we saw last year uh, this is a class for a master uh, degree i kept the mathematics at i mean the lowest possible level that could be as well too high for some of you but let us try to to have a, a, a recap of mathematics in one of the first lesson and to do it uh, uh, in the proper way don't be afraid of, uh, of uh, the equation that we are going to see then i put here automatic control but because i'm polarized and uh, i consider this uh, uh, important uh, just after physical mathematics and then uh, also mechanical aspect. I don't have a mechanical degree. Computer science. Computer science is, is mandatory to not be afraid about computer, not, not be an expert. Not, we don't need a nerd or, or hacker, but uh, if you are afraid of a computer, I, I, I suppose that you wouldn't be here, but you cannot control a robot. And then there are a lot of, of domains, artificial vision, bioengineering, biological science, neuroscience, artificial intelligence, they all are together in this horizontal topic that is robotics. Okay? It is really horizontal. And here there is a penguin because we don't have any Microsoft or Apple uh, driven robot controlling, driven PC controlling a robot. Okay, and this is just the logo of a feedback action. And okay, this is a um, uh, Big Bang Theory. That is very funny because actually the, the PhD students uh, are like that. I mean, that uh, in the United States, especially because they are more more different than in Italy. They are all Italians. In the United States, you can see all the kind of nationalities. Okay. We usually separate robotics in its industrial and advanced. Industrial uh, or okay, industrial applications, of course. This is kind of major and affordable technology. You can buy a robot. You can buy way of teaching the robot. Uh, you can be more or less uh, safe when they use the robot, and you you know what's going to to happen. And then there is advanced robotics research. Where the research is going in the last. 10, 15 years. Spatial, underwater, nuclear, military, and service robotic. Home automation. We don't have robots uh, in the, our houses, except for, for the, the Roomba, the cleaning one. But we don't have yet robots. Medical systems, processes, entertainment, agricultural, education. And this is where the research is working. Okay, what is industrial automation? Well, industrial automation is basically to put a bunch of technologies in the industrial production, in the industrial environment. What is the difference between an industrial environment and, for example, this room? Well, in industrial environment, I, I do have, I used to have, now also, this is also changing, uh, the robotic cell. So, a spaces that are physically separated by the uh, humans and uh, where everything is under control the light the temperature where the camera has to see the process and the, the the item that i need to work on for example arrives more or less always in the same position but this is an industrial environment if a man tries to enter and just open the door well, the door has a, a, a switch, an electric switch, and just turn off the motor of the robot. This was, I mean, the beginning of the industrial automation. Now, 
for example, there are some sensors that they're not, they um, don't turn off the robot, but for example, they just make it old. It is from the safety perspective, uh, uh, it's not the same, uh, but it means that we trust a little bit more on the sentences. We used to have uh, rigid automation. Uh, when we had uh, the Industrial Revolution in Italy, in after the Second World War, and we had one company, one national company, uh, we used to have uh, two models of car, and for each model, two colors. That's all. And they produce well in advance all the cars. When in advance, with respect to the demand, with respect to the selling moment. Then, of course, from rigid, the market is requiring the programmable toward the flexible to me. It means that I want my car now, and I want all the devices and all the um, all the accessory, uh, all the optional that. I mean, that uh, make me seem that my car is unique. So, and this is not only for cars, so everything. So we need to, to, to product when the demand arrives. This also may, saves a lot in uh, the warehouse system, in the, the, the ordering the buffer and so on. But the market is changing. So we need to, uh, to be more flexible in the automation. And this is true also for the robots. Okay, what is the face? Uh, how does it look like an industrial robot? This is an industrial robot. Uh, Comao is an Italian company. Uh, this guy is uh, quite huge. And it comes with uh, a control cabinet where the electronics is and the computer is. Okay. Now, for us, let us limit a little bit uh, what we are going to do in this class. For us, a robot will be a serial link of rigid bodies. One extremity will, will be fixed somewhere on the ground. Then we have pieces of robot that can move. And we are interesting, especially in what happened at the extremity of the robot, so the end effect. And it's better to focus on a, on a specific structure because otherwise, I mean, we can have uh, whatever we can imagine and still, I mean, they can be defined, call it as robot. Usually we have a wrist. What does it mean, a wrist? This is the wrist, okay? If you look at the human body, the human body is not very different from this robot or from this robot. Actually, is it through the Vichevert? So the robot copied the characteristic of the human body. We do have, okay, we have seven degrees of freedom, but now this is not important. We have some first links that allow us to move the position. And then we have the remaining link that are very compact and allow us to easily change the orientation. Okay, and this is the wrist. And this is more or less what you, uh, what you can see here. Okay, it has some reason, some dynamic reason to, to design the robot in that way. The control system in an in industrial robot, we do have uh, usually a main machine interface for example, this is a my machine interface, a recent one. We can program a little bit the robot, usually with some um, company developed languages. Each company has its own uh, language, but I mean, it's nothing difficult for a um, software engineering because the, the languages, they have the common uh, uh, loop cycles, uh, and then there are specific commands, for example, to make a trajectory plan. I can say, okay, just move joint two from here to here, 
and I give you the time low and, you, and just send enter and let the robot make the move, okay? I can do whatever I want in an easy way. So this is a, a main machine interface or graphical user interface. Uh, I have some videos uh, just to interrupt a little bit the equations. We, we haven't seen any equation yet. For example, this is an advanced main machine interface by a German company. And um, this guy is actually programming the robot without coding. So this is a part of the research, very active, in order to make easy for a person to program a robot. Okay. Okay. And it's just explaining a little bit into the detail how is it doing that. Okay. And this can be customized and brought on the uh, site of the of the client. Let us see a little bit uh, according to the, the, the definition that uh, we saw, what kind of kinematic structures we are going to see, and we will we will be able to understand it to control. Okay. Uh, one possibility is the so-called Cartesian robot. This is a Cartesian robot, and you can see those arrows here that represent the possible movement of the robot. In this case, the movement is linear. All the three joints, the name is joint, is uh, linear, and for this reason they are called prismatic joints. And I can move those three and actually the volume that is occupied by this uh, gray area is the workspace. So the end effector can reach any position. We have three degrees of freedom. So position X, Y, Z. The orientation is here is uh, out of interest, okay? The orientation uh, will bother you a lot in next classes because it's not easy to represent the orientation of a rigid body. Mathematically, it has some uh, subtles that need to be understood. Today, we are not going to make uh, an interruption because it's very, I mean, I just talk. Next class, we make an interruption. Uh, this structure is very rigid. It means that it's very stiff. We will understand later on what this, what does it mean? Let me see. Everything okay here? Can you hear? Okay. Thank you. This is the so-called portal robot. And uh, uh, it is used when you really have an EV load. In this case, the mechanical structure is designed in order to lift very heavy weight. We are not going to study mechanical design of robots, okay? But let us discuss in an intuitive way about it when it comes in the discussion. Uh, this is the finite cylindrical robot. If you look here, the cylindrical robot, the first joint is rotational. It makes this rotation. Then I have a prismatic, and then another prismatic. It's a good mechanical rigidity. Spherical robot. I have two rotational and one prismatic joint. This is its workspace. I mean, the cylindrical, the name is very easy. If you look, uh, the workspace is a cylinder, okay? It's not a, a uh, plain cylinder because if you look here, you cannot go in, uh, in this internal cylinder, okay? So, but for the spherical robot, this rounded surface of the workspace is actually a sphere. And it's also good mechanical rigidity. This is a, a very uh, common structure, especially 
in industry, uh, pharmaceutical, or with the need to, to move small items, small in terms of dimension. We do have, uh, if you look here, a first rotational joint, a second rotational joint, then a prismatic joint, and then you can even have another rotational joint close to the end effect. So this is why here it is written two, three a, a rotation and one prismatic. This is very rigid in the vertical load. And then the anthropomorphic. This is one of the uh, most diffused structure. Only three joints, because we will see later that this is uh, actually the, the, the part of the robot that brings the wrist. Three rotational joints, okay? Uh, those items are the characteristics of the structures, and here there is written dextrous. What does it mean, dextrous? Well, now it doesn't mean anything for us, but uh, it is related uh, to the possibility to move the end effector and to orient the end effector. Okay, so dextrous means I can give the orientation that I want, but here I only have three degrees of freedom. I can only think about the position. We will understand later. If I put a wrist here, okay, this is a dexter structure. And now there is also another term that is totally obscure now. It will be clear later. Configuration dependent mechanical rigidity. To understand it, let us think at the human body. If I push my heart in that direction, Wait, uh, uh, do you have my, can you see me in, uh, in this moment when I share my screen? The movement yes, yes. with my, yes, so you, you can see the movement with my heart, my arm, or just stop presenting for a while. Okay. Si, professor, vediamo lo stesso. Va bene, allora adesso ormai lo, 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 lo per la prossima volta. This is my arm. And if I push my arm in that direction, it's more flexible with respect to that direction. Okay? And if you think at this characteristic of the arm, this is related to the configuration. Okay? In, depending on how I put my arm, I can have a different rigidity. And this is more or less what's going on with the This is more or less what's going on with the, the um, anthropomorphic robot. It's very warm here, right? Okay, some pictures. This is a scala, quite a small one, if, if you can if you can appreciate. Four joints. Rotational, 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 prismatic, so. Nine kilos of payloads. This is a re repeatability, and we will see the definition of repeatability. If you, if you had a measurement um, class in your career, you know what is it, repeatability. Uh, I can uh, reach a certain position with uh, here with an accuracy of uh, 0 0.08 millimeter. It means that if I take an external measurement device and I tell to the robot coder, I will, uh, the robot will measure zero error with its internal controller, but with the external measurement device, I will appreciate an error of uh, 0 0.08 zero eight millimeters. This is the accuracy. The repeatability is okay. Now just move away and back on that position. And uh, no matter where, but it will come back in a uh, region that confined within dot 
0, 2 millimeters on x, y, and dot 0, 5 on z. Okay? So this is the repeatability. Quite small numbers, if you, I mean, you can appreciate that they're very small numbers. So this is for very accurate uh, uh, manufacturing. This guy has a payload of 12 kilo. It's huge. No, it's not huge. There are bigger robots, but I mean, it's two meters high. And repeatability is uh, more or less the double of this one. Okay? 60 kilo of payload, still a, you know, worst repeatability because now the structure is larger and it's more difficult from the mechanical aspect. Here we can see a very strange stuff, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of weight with, uh, I mean, this subpart structure. This is very simple. If I have to balance myself in that direction, as a man, I usually also no, lift the other one to balance my weight. It's more or less this idea. We are not going to go into those details. This is mechanical design, but it's a interesting as well. Portal. This is a portal with a robot mounted, uh, no, flipped it over. Now, this is uh, an anthropomorphic structure that uh, uh, emulates or copy the human, the human heart. You can really appreciate that this is really shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist. Why seven degrees of freedom? Let us stay at an intuitive description now. The, for, to describe the position of this object uh, in the in the space, I need the three uh, numbers, x, y, and z. And the orientation, well, the orientation, as I said, uh, I mean, we will spend uh, several lessons on the orientation, but I have three degrees of freedom for the orientation, no more. Why do I need uh, seven joints? Well, because it is better, it is redundant, and we will also spend some time in understand the concept of redundancy. Our body is plenty of redundancy. We have a lot of degrees of freedom to do something, okay? This is uh, a robot. Uh, they integrated two sensors. Why I wanted to show you this one, just because uh, this is an example where we do have uh, sensor in sensors integrated uh, in the robot. Why? Because we need to know where the end effector is going, and uh, we need to use the end effector for specific tasks. So, in this case, they sell also the software package to sort objects, for example. This is a pick and place, okay? Shape recognition, quality check, Measuring, you can use a robot to make measurement, okay? What are the typical applications? This is a list of a typical applications. We will see some videos later on, so let me just go quickly here. Welding uh, everywhere, uh, painting, sealing, uh, gluing, uh, pick and place, whatever you have in, ma in mind that you can use a robot to do it. Here we have some example of a service robotics. Uh, Roomba, one of the few commercial robots that uh, actually can be bought by, I mean, the public. This is a lab with uh, multiple robot. This is the big dog, one of the first uh, huge success from Boston Dynamics. It, they are then developed Atlas uh, uh, Robotics, the humanoid one. When this came out, uh, it was totally confidential uh, from military project. It has been a very nice success from the, from the control aspect. It made some huge stuff. This is the same company as uh, the Roomba, uh, iRobot, that then developed this for, commercial, for uh, military use. As you can see, it's, the name is All Terrain. All Terrain because we 
I mean, the mechanical design allow to move on uneven terrain easily. Okay, uh, drone underwater, underwater with a manipulator, and uh, medical one. Medical one, I'll show you. Uh, uh, drone with fixed wings. Uh, um, a wheelchair. A wheelchair is a is a robot if you make it automatic. This is a, a torso of a humanoid mounted on a mobile base. Space robotics, and to, to grasp uh, humanoid in an entertainment application. And uh, I mean the, the first things that when you see a robot playing soccer, it's is to smile. Yes, uh, it's funny. Think at the very first video games when they the way they entered into the market. They were LEDs turning on and off and you pretend to play soccer. Now the market of video games is huge. And uh, this is something, something the, 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 the company are uh, pointing at. Market of entertainment robotics. And this one, I, I leave you to your fantasy. Uh, what is this for? Because it's very unpleasant. It's for a, a medical application, okay? inspection device here there's a nice picture of uh, all the uh, onda humanoids developed all over the year and this is uh, uh, leonardo this is a robot uh, developed for um, uh, surgical applications actually this guy here is uh, one of the your colleagues of the class of two years ago because uh, this robot here is uh, in uh, uh, Naples, so we have uh, an agreement with uh, other universities. We have two agreements as, as Robotics Group. One with the uh, University, uh, uh, Cassino, Napoli, Salerno, uh, Basilicata, e Cam Campania, che era Napoli 2. And this is uh, uh, one agreement existing since uh, more than 20 years before that I came here. And then another one is on uh, uh, marine robotics uh, with uh, Genova, Firenze, Pisa, uh, Bologna, Ancona, Roma, Cassino, Lecce e um, Calabria. Uh, more recent one and most of our European project are made together with this consortium and marine robotics is one of the topic we want more in a, a research project i just have a few videos to see a little bit video of robots that moves this is in a commercial from comau just to show The commercial are very useful to understand uh, the movement of a robot from the educational perspective, okay? Or any any kind of software to make uh, graphical representation. But uh, I mean, this is already done, so it's uh, it's easier. Okay, you can also see where they underline the characteristic of the robot in order to sell it. Repeatability flexibility, pick and place payload, this, this is uh, 10 kilos, you can mount it upside down, here they talk about the stiffness of the robot, in this case stiffness is good, we will see other cases where stiffness is not good and we want compliance. Okay, okay. So this was a anthropomorphic six degrees of freedom. This is a, a packaging. Uh, sorry, it's very, it's very short. This is a packaging. We can appreciate uh, a structure that uh, we will not study because uh, we have uh, an end effector and all prismatic joint connected to the end effector. 
this kind of robot is a little bit different from the mathematical aspect and we don't have the time to do it so just an example of a pick in place and a structure that we are not going to study okay the Roomba this was the first on the market uh, in uh, 2002 so almost 20 years ago at a certain moment uh, you had uh, some kind of uh, 15 cleaning robots on the market but uh, if you look now they're much smaller because it's not easy okay it's not easy to to make the consumer no um, it is easy to stay with a, a robot to make it uh, easy to be uh, programmed to understand what's going on from the robot to make it robust re resilient resilient sorry not resilient. okay this guy here is a professor from university of Rome La Sapienza is one of the big uh, mind in robotics uh, worldwide and is making something kind of strange because let's see it again the robot is going toward him and he's putting a, his body on it so he's making research to coexist in the same workspace with the robot the robot should be safe okay so in this case the robot detected the impact this is something that uh, uh, we are also working on this guy here is from the German center DLR. You know, I mean, there are very few of these robots worldwide. And if you see, it's huge and uh, has a lot of degrees of freedom. And here there are just some uh, exercise, some details about the hardware, the control aspect. This guy here was very young and now is director of DLR. This is also not young anymore, working still at DLR. And from the control aspect, this is not very easy. Okay, so they are showing what they are able to do with the, with the robot. And some detail about uh, about the the control aspect. DARPA challenge, uh, since 2004, DARPA, that is Defense Agency, something in the United States, is organizing a robotic challenge in which they give money to the winner, something that in Europe we cannot do. So they give a check to the winner. The first one, the robot had to run 240 kilometers in the desert with a limit time. And the first one, there was no winner. Okay, no one could run 240 kilometers in the desert uh, in, I think, uh, three hours, so quite fast. Of course, autonomously, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, it's, uh, it's easy. And uh, this was a, a, a just a, a um, interview of robots trying to... And they give you freedom on kind of robot, two wheels, four wheels, whatever. This is very simple AV, torpedo-like, nothing, nothing exciting. Manipulator on space, this guy here is a huge robot with a fixed base, but without gravity. So the, the, the mathematical model uh, is a little bit different and actually is a little bit uh, simpler. Humanoid, I don't see, I don't, I don't know, sorry, I don't know uh, what kind of market. This is quite popular, but it's a little bit uh, a toy. You cannot do uh, much with this one. A lot of uh, research lab has it. The things that you can do is to study the gate, but from the control aspect, uh, you have a limited access to the motor. So I don't know why it's, it's so popular. It's more or less a game. And here, sorry, 
this was the video that uh, Honda made because they stopped the research on uh, Asimo started in 1986 uh, they stopped it and in this video they said uh, what kind of technology they transfer from the research dedicated to Asimo to other products. This is something that is usually not well understood about research. Is it true that uh, in 1986 research on humanoids was really quite useless to advance it? And I mean, they didn't come in any uh, commercial products, but they benefit from a lot of uh, um, intermediate or side results from this research. So in the end, it has been, of course, a positive outcome to, for Honda to invest in this research. For example, this object
Hi guys, sorry. At what point uh, did I lose you or I mean you lost me? Lo brevi di me lo può dire lei? Quando mi avete perso? Sì, eh, se si è interrotto improvvisamente. Eh, Ma in un punto, a che punto? Eh, non mi ricordo precisamente. Un, <ride> prima non la sentivamo più. Eh, vabbè, io me ne accorgerò dopo guardando il video. Any, any of you that can tell me when you lost the connection? Oh, I mean, when, uh, when the, the connection was lost by uh, our Wi-Fi? Ten minutes ago. Uh, ten minutes ago. Sì, abbiamo perso prima la voce. E bene, momento, ma dove, dove eravamo? A che, a che pagina? Perché poi alla fine questo qua è l'unico importante degli ultimi minuti. Questo l'avete perso? Sì, questo sì, questo non l'abbiamo visto. Questo è il diagramma, non l'abbiamo visto. E mi sa, e mi sa che, che non ve l'è registrato, perché la registrazione non è locale, la registrazione è di Meet. Sì, è rimasto interrotto perché si è bloccato prima in un primo momento e al seguito uh, si è persa proprio la connessione. Eh, ragazzi, mi dispiace, però questa la rifaccio un attimo perché così almeno sanno a cosa vanno incontro i, soprattutto gli studenti stranieri. Ok, uh, I'm going to just uh, repeat only the, the part of the last slide because I think... Uh, it is uh, important uh, uh, more or less to, to get a picture of uh, what we are going to do in this class. Uh, I will be a little bit faster because, I mean, I've just done it, but while, ah, while watching videos, okay, thank you. So you lost while watching videos. Okay, so the only thing uh, is this one. Uh, now I'm uh, with the hotspot of my mobile, so uh, we shouldn't lose connection. What we could do, uh, lo previte, if you know personally any in the class, uh, whenever the connection is lost, you can make a phone call because uh, I have the full screen, so I don't see when the connection is lost. Okay. If you know any one of your colleagues here, uh, qualcuno di voi con al numero di telefono, lei come si chiama? Uh, chiami Ferraro se perde la connessione Pietro Perfetto. Ferraro ok, sì. okay let, let me continue and uh, uh, I'm sorry for the guys here that I'm going to repeat it but just to, to give you a picture of what we are going to do in uh, uh, this class this is a, uh, the first seat is a little bit complex this diagram but let me try to explain uh, let me start here from the core of uh, this diagram. We have a robot, okay? This is what we are going to do in this class with fixed this. And uh, we have uh, a line connecting to a block where estimate is written. Estimate is a re really an abstract uh, term to describe a kind, a bunch of algorithms uh, that they do have the purpose to perceive the state of the robot and uh, his relation with the environment. So here we do have uh, all... Professor, uh, scusate, non vediamo lo schermo per ora. <laughs> Grazie, perché altrimenti... Gli altri sono andati a pranzo, immagino, perché si sono tutti scollegati. E... Ah, no, no. C'è qualcuno che mi scrive, però io anche sul volume alto non sento, il, non sento la notifica. Ok, so let's start for the third time. Here we have uh, the robot. This is the core of the block diagram. Then, uh, this is a little bit more complex uh, of uh, a common control loop with several loops. So this, is, uh, this block here, is in charge of make an estimate. Estimate uh, in uh, an uh, as abstract term to represent uh, the algorithm, some of them uh, we have seen it uh, uh, last year, needed to implement the perception of the robot 
position robot configuration and its relationship with respect to the environment. We are not going into the detail of this block here because this is something that we have done uh, last year. But talking about the possibility of thesis, we do have uh, a lot uh, of thesis available in this block, okay, making estimate of what's going on around the robot. So let us focus now on the red loop here. Uh, we have a robot, we have a C. This is a controller. The output of the controller is a force. The input of the controller is the desired position of the joint and the measurement. This is exactly the control loop that some of you made in the first class of control theory. The difference is that we are going to do it for a uh, nonlinear model because the robot is a little bit more complex than the model that you have seen uh, in the second year or, or, or similar. Then we move on the outer loop, that is the orange loop, and this is the point that we should focus a little bit the attention on, is uh, the second point. The input of this block is the end effector desired configuration or trajectory. And the output is the joint position. So here, everything is in the understanding of this aspect. When I want to move something, I want to move the end effector, and I just, in order to make it clear, I just grasp a bottle. I usually want to move for example, in a segment on the Cartesian space, okay? But, but a segment in the Cartesian space is a coordinated movement of the joint. You say, if I just move the joint one by one, what I got actually is an arc of a circle, clearly, but it's not a segment in the Cartesian space. I need to coordinate the movement of my joints in order to make what I want from the end effect. For example, if I want only to, to point a video camera without moving the video camera, I need a very complex movement because I want to, to take, for example, this point still and move only the camera. This is something that we will learn how to do it in this uh, uh, class. Then there are two outer loop the yellow and the blue one, this is something that we are not going to do in this class. It is something that we need and we do have in our lab in order to make some experiments that are a little bit more funny than just move from A to B. But in this class, we will keep our attention in the red and orange control loop. And it will be also quite complex already. Uh, now, I would like to, to finish very easily, very smoothly with this video. It is 10 minutes, the battery is, is low, and then we go to lunch. Okay? This is the video made with the handbook of robotics, and we can uh, appreciate uh, some uh, applications, of course, there is a, there is a, a voice uh, on it, on uh, the direction where robotics is going. Okay, this is a warehouse uh, system and this is the reality, it's not, it's not a research activity. Those are research lab, mining, agricultural, Uh, Frank Amiga, building another Frank Amiga. Plug is common operation in a structured environment. In an aerospace factory, only recently the robot arrived. Okay, this is a showcase. This is a project from Professor Siciliano to make a pizza. Very challenging from the mathematical aspect. DLR, the German center, pick and place, smart uh, device. Okay, this is 
teleoperation for space application, especially with an optic device. Surgical, this is an optic device, so it's feeling the force feedback from the surgery. With optic devices again. Uh, very small is very fast. Perception. Okay, this is Professor Bruno Siciliano. Interaction, grasping. Hand, we, we are not going, this is a lab in Napoli, we are not going to do any kind of hand because it's a big topic by itself. Learning. Uh, interaction, physical interaction. Physical interaction again. This is the barring operation. We have seen a little bit this one. Grasp. Grasp again. It's not easy.
Hello. Hi, bro. ஒரு <laughs> 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 